So all the wreckers wanted a lot of money for a gearbox. So guess where we are? Pick a park. Don't leave that car just sitting in a heap. Come to Pick Apart, where everything's cheap. Secondhand parts for secondhand cars from a door to a wheel or a bumper bar. this poor little car before I have to go to work at one o'clock. We can do it. Let's see how we go. Oh, I can't really see it. There you go. We've already taken out the radiator. I helped. Because I want another radiator too. Yes, Kitty helped. I'm helping. Much mechanicing. The thing about pick apart is you don't have to be gentle with anything. Rip it out. It's out! Look, it's on the ground! Oh, I can't feel like there we go. There he is. Taking a gearbox out and pick apart sucks. <laughs> Ripper! That wasn't as bad as I expected it to be. Oh, we've got a gearbox. In a much better condition radiator. Bit of mission, but we got it out. Oh, thanks. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Is it weird that I still know the the whole song of that? Alright, we've got a gearbox. Now it's time to put it in, but you guys have seen me do that once, so I don't think you need to watch it again. So we'll fast forward through this. All right, we skipped ahead to this part. The engine's back in with the new gearbox. Thanks to my friend Damo. Yay! Would have been a real bitch to get that in otherwise. So it's, uh, yeah, back in and we've get to rig the battery for uh, another time. So we might uh, start up and see if this works. I might pass the camera to Damo. He knows a thing or two about cameras. Still making some nice rattling noises, but that's uh, that's an issue for later on. Back it out. Everyone, welcome back. So we skipped ahead past all the uh, crap of uh, removing this uh, old gearbox, putting the new one in, and it drives great. It all works. So now we can actually get back to doing race car stuff. Um, we've pretty much been doing just maintenance so far. Now we're going to start doing um, battery relocations, roll cages, air intakes, exhausts, uh, all sorts of things that are much more fun than just making the damn thing work. At the moment, I'm in the process of removing the old interior, uh, the old center console stuff, because we don't need the stereo. Um, I do want to keep all the, the heating controls in there after some advice from uh, fellow racers. Um, I just found a Missy Higgins CD squashed down the back of the CD player, so that's now going to be our, uh, our theme song for the cut. No, it's getting and terrible. Um, <clears throat> but we'll get all that apart, and then we're going to start running the uh, the wires for the battery and we'll relocate the battery back here. Uh, 
um, yeah, we start doing fun things. Also, really cool thing, as you probably heard on the video, the, uh, the tappets have been making absolutely terrible noises on this car, and I was a little concerned about the, um, the history of the engine and what kind of condition it's in. Well, I did an oil flush on it this morning, ran some, um, some flush through it, cleaned it all out, dumped the old oil out, it came out like water, it was so thin. Um, replace the filter, put some decent oil in, and now it sounds perfect. There's no um, tappet noise or anything. It sounds great. So hopefully the engine's good. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll keep going. I've got the uh, the battery um, with some better connectors on it, but still ghetto rigged in here, and that'll all go in the back. We'll move these connectors through, extend the wires, and um, yeah, that'll be pretty easy. And we will run a kill switch in the center console on the bit I'm working on at the moment. So I'm going to have to uh, do a blanking plate here with an alloy cover and then we'll run a, um, a proper kill switch which will not only disconnect the battery but also disconnect the ignition and that'll run on kind of like a, a mountain bike uh, brake cable and that'll go out to the scuttle panel outside and they'll be able to access that from outside the marshals if the, uh, the unthinkable happens. Anyway, we'll keep on going with this and we'll video more fun stuff as it happens. Okay, so I've got the air conditioning unit out there's the aircon in there, it's this big ass box that sits up in here and so that's the fan and well, I want to keep the fan for a demister and then, then there's the control box that controls the um, where all the vents go so instead of gutting this big cavity and um, I want to sell this as one unit because I might be able to get 50 to 100 bucks or whatever for the old aircon unit I'm going to 3D print adapters turn them square to round and run a hose between there and there Hopefully that'll work, so we'll see how my design skills go. Also while we're here, how super random is this? This is the connector to the brake booster from the passenger side. So obviously, Korean left-hand drive, and instead of having to modify the whole engine bay, they've just run a big-ass bar that goes over to the driver's side for a right-hand drive car. It's so random. Okay, I've got a little bit more time today before I have to head home, so I'm going to start doing the brakes. Um, we've got our good mate Matt at Get Parts. It's a new company he's uh, started. Matt's been in the industry for a long time. He knows a lot about cars. He's actually got his own um, uh, racing sprint car, which is unreal, and I'm very excited to see it back on the track soon as he's rebuilding it right now. But he's hooking us up with um, with brakes. So we've gone with um, just some RDA brakes. It's got to be um, standard configuration. Can't be slotted or cross drilled or any of those things. Um, and for the brakes for now, I've just gone with some ABC uh, yellow stuffs. So they're a sort of track day compound. Uh, a lot of the guys run the, the Winmax um, brakes, but unfortunately they're... I've spoken to a few of the guys, well number one they're expensive, and I've spoken to a few of the guys and they say they're very bitey, and if you're not that used to the car, used to track days, you lock up your brakes a lot and you chew through the tyres. So they said start off with something a bit more mellow, uh, and then move on to those once you get used to the car. So we're going to start off with these. Um, yeah, we'll see how we go. I've also got the rear drums and the rear shoes. Um, as I said, Maddie's helped us out with this stuff and I will be supporting him from here on in. He's, um, his business will be doing open day soon. I'd love to get this ready for the open day. Um, he's going to have some of his stickers on this car. He'll have a sprint car there and a couple of other guys he's helping out with racing. So hopefully we'll get it there for the opening. Um, but yeah, if anybody, I'll, uh, I'll put the link to his website in the comments when, um, when the website launches. But definitely support a local business who supports other racers. We'll get, uh, we'll get started on this. I'm going to pull the, um, the old brakes off. I'm going to paint the calipers because race car, you know, while it's off. And uh, yeah, let's get going. As always, everything takes twice as long as you planned. So, because Hyundai basically bought technology from the Japanese um, to start their cars, it was old technology. Um, every new car I've worked on with brakes, basically, you take off the caliper, you take off the wheel. Disc slips off, new one on, but because this is old school, you actually have to take the entire hub assembly off, bang out the hub from the press bearing, and then you can get the disc off. Whoa, sucks. But uh, anyway, we've got that off now. Everything was nice and seized up and really shit, but uh, we've got it off now, so we get the new, um, new disc on. The old one looks super ghetto terrific. The new one looks lovely. So we'll stick that on. Um, I don't have much time left now. That took a lot longer than expected. So I'll uh, probably just get that back together and do the calipers another day, I think. 
what is really is a mishmash of a video. We uh, ran out of time the other day while filming the break thing. I, uh, I just needed to get that back together because I had to get home, so I pretty much just forgot the film. So anyway, here we are. Now uh, I'm back at home and I'm doing something a little different today. We've um, these are the vents out of the dashboard, so what I want to do is replace these vents basically with the gauges. So we've got a water temperature gauge and an oil pressure gauge. So um, I pop these vents out uh, as so I can use that as a template. Now the it's a really funky shape. I know it looks pretty basic, but in a CAD program, it's actually pretty tricky to copy. So I've made uh, one here, sort of doing basic measurements and eyeballing it. I've got it pretty close. Uh, if it's wrong, what I'll do is I'll basically trace around this on a piece of paper, scan the paper in, and then I'll have the right shape, and then I can just scale it to size, extrude it, and then put a hole in the middle for the, the gauge. This one's looking pretty good. Um, I've put some countersunk holes in there. Uh, they'll be fiddly to get to, but we'll be able to screw from the inside out into the plastic of the dashboard, which should hold pretty well. Um, and also, I've angled the pod holder so the gauges will be angled towards the driver, because you know we won't have a passenger seat, not yet. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. We'll print up a copy of this. Um, I'm printing on PET G, which is uh, similar to PET bottles. It's actually really strong plastic and really good for heat resistance. Um, stuff like this is printed, is made out of ABS plastic. I do have a roll of ABS as well. Um, it can be a little fiddly to print with, so I'm gonna run with PETG on this one. It's not gonna get hot in the car anyway, not, not by plastic standards. Um, and it's cheap too. The, the whole roll of PETG, it's a kilogram film, that cost me about 22 bucks. And printing something like this will cost me 40, 50 cents max. It's really cheap. So we can print as many copies as we want and try and get it right and play with the sizes. It does take a bit of time, but I just leave it on during the day when I'm working or overnight when I'm sleeping and then wake up in the morning to a, uh, a printed piece. So we'll, we'll stick this one on for print and we'll see how it comes out. Okie dokie, so the first print came out and it's... I'm having trouble with my print at the moment, so it's not the greatest, but a little bit of paint over the top will fix it up. Um, yeah, so it's angled and will sit in the vent and it's holding pretty well, so it's not bad. So what I'm printing next is this guy. So this will be the vent adapter. This is the, uh, this is the box I took out for the air conditioning system. And so that hole there, that shape there vaguely I've got it measured up the best I can and then, then that will adapt to a hundred mil pipe I'm gonna use some of the leftover pipe for my ventilation system on my 3d printer which is that stuff there so it's just the um, ventilation foil and I'll get it pretty tight because it doesn't need to be loose and I'll stop it rattling around it should work well so I'm gonna start that print off and see how it goes, but I think I've got it pretty good. Now I've just got to design the other side, but I think that will do the trick. For anyone that doesn't know about 3D printing, what we'll do is we set it up with um, an infill, so it won't be a solid block like that, because obviously that'd be a, a ton of plastic. So you actually set it up as a, a grid inside that. Um, let me quickly save this and I'll show you. Cool, okay, I've got this in the, uh, this is called a um, slicing program. And it slices it because 3D printers work in slices. So if we go to layers mode, I'll just zoom in on this a bit, then we pull the slider. You can see the different layers of how it prints. And that's our infill there. So we can actually change the density of that infill at the moment to 40%, so we bring that down to 20. see it's actually a grid pattern in there so it uses a lot less material we can change that up to be uh, triangles or whatever the hell we want and that stops us using a ton of material and it still gives you a lot of strength because it's obviously cross hatched um, and you can use a lot of different infills for that so it's pretty cool anyway hopefully that'll work we'll print that in pet g as well and see how it goes Alrighty, we've got this guy under print. Um, we're going to try and do a time lapse for you guys with the, uh, the SLR here, although it's uh, it's going to be an eight to nine hour print. So uh, 
we'll see how the battery goes on that. If it works, we'll put it at the end of the video. But for now, I think we're going to call this one quits. So um, thanks for sticking around because that was a mishmash of a video. And we'll, um, I think I'm going to head in tomorrow and go do some breaks. But we'll, we'll do that in the next video. Thanks for watching. Oh,